despite possessing vital growth contributors like human capital, logistics and institutions, South Africa's productivity growth lags behind global standards. Traditional productivity measures often overlook factors crucial for sustainable development, such as environmental impact and innovation. Analysis reveals that South Africa heavily relies on factors currently underperforming, posing significant challenges to economic and employment growth. Addressing these issues demands targeted policies focusing on education, infrastructure, institutional capacity and innovation to foster an environment conducive to long-term, inclusive and sustainable economic growth. And right about now, I am joined by Christy Vujain, Economist and Senior Manager at Strategy, PwC South Africa. Thank you for joining me today. Good afternoon. All right, I guess it's afternoon over there, so good afternoon to you. Now, let's begin yes. by the mystery. Let us begin by demystifying the Productivity Potential Index. I mean, it's a new way of looking at productivity. Uh, first, let's look at it, and then maybe we'll, we'll also look at what differentiates it from the other you know, regular measures of productivity. So there are many different measures of productivity because it's not an exact science. Uh, many of the traditional measures look at uh, the inputs of, of capital, so that would be infrastructure. They look at the, the human element. Uh, but we found that many of them lack some of the very important things that we think of when it comes to sustainability. So not only economic growth, but sustainable economic growth. So those would be elements like the environmental consideration. We need to understand how we grow and how we create productivity, but also not having an adverse effect on the environment. So our productivity index is, uh, is one that's, that's building upon our understanding of productivity, but making very much sure that we are also thinking about sustainability. We don't just want productivity, we need it to be sustainable over the long term. I like what you said about sustainability and the environment. Help us, you know, balance that, that particular or that aspect of this conversation. How do we, you know, infuse this into productivity? Well, that's part of the challenges that we have at the moment when it comes to sustainability and, uh, for example, climate change. We know that companies need to adapt. Uh, they cannot just focus on profits. They need to focus on people. They need to focus on the environment. And it's a way of thinking. It's a way of building a strategy that sees companies go beyond just focusing on revenues and profits and dividends, but also impact on the community, impact on the environment. How do you improve the social situation within your community, within your town, for example? So that's a way of thinking about it. We've, we've often heard the phrase ESG, environmental, social and governance. And at a company level, that's where some of these key decisions come in. How do I make decisions that are beneficial to the environment, that also support social development, and that delivers quality governance at the same time as my shareholders actually getting their financial revenues as well? All right, let's look at this now. You know, South Africa's productivity is strongly determined by talk about human capital, logistics, and institutions. And these are, you know, currently among the country's biggest economic challenges. I'd like you to talk to us about how this essentially affects the country's productivity, how that, you know, it's driven by these forces, and yet these are the same factors that are probably responsible for the economic challenge it's going through right now. How is that affecting its productivity, and maybe how we can get South Africa out of that? We know South Africa's have got a big unemployment problem. We've got one of the highest unemployment rates in the world. So clearly, we've got a problem with productivity. If our productivity was much higher, we'd get a lot more international investment. We'd have a lot more jobs. And our challenge is getting the right things in place. As, as you've mentioned, our analysis shows that the key factors driving productivity, there are many of them, but the biggest three are education, it is the quality of institutions. Uh, those are probably the two main ones that we are most concerned about. And the infrastructure is the other one. In South Africa at the moment, we've got challenges with education, long-standing challenges where we spend relatively a lot of money on education, if you look at the size of the economy, but the outcomes are not great. The, the skill of the people leaving school, it's not as desirable. If we think of infrastructure, um, especially in some of our big cities, we've got infrastructure failures that are resulting in some of the roads not being usable, uh, days on end where people don't have water, and we all know this electricity situation as well. So those are some of the big features that we are dependent on for productivity, but also at the same time, as a country, we are not doing very well at that at the moment. And we can see that in our economic growth rate, which is very low at this stage. 
forecasted less than 1% this year. So it's quite understandable why we are struggling because those fundamental things that are driving our productivity and our competitiveness against other countries are really not doing as expected at this point. Well, you've talked about unemployment, uh, talked about education. Now, I'd like us to uh, look at um, this particular one, which is infrastructure and uh, physical capital. We know these have been a source of concern to the country. So how do you rate the government's um, handling of this? And wh what are your recommendations for ensuring that this aspect really works for the country? Well, I think we all can understand why infrastructure is important. It's the roads that we drive on, it's the electricity that we, the lights we put on. It's all of those elements that make businesses more efficient, more profitable, they can create more jobs. So infrastructure is fundamental to most government spending goals. Uh, if we look across the world, most governments will have a big focus on infrastructure spending. And in South Africa, as with many other countries, in the, in the sort of the aftermath of COVID-19, there's a lot of fiscal challenges to deal with. And one of them is how do you spend your money? And oftentimes, infrastructure is where money is taken away in order to ensure that we can continue delivering services like education, healthcare, and so on. For us, the solution to South Africa's infrastructure challenges, there are quite a few things we need to look at, but one of them is public-private cooperation. Uh, we don't have a long list of public-private initiatives in this country, but organized business and the government are working together to help solve our biggest challenges around uh, transport, energy, water, etc. And what we are proposing is a, a collaboration model uh, very similar to many other public-private partnership in initiatives where government and the public sector enter on an equal footing and there's, uh, there's governance structures that ensure that the money is spent well, that the results are actually achieved. That's the only way that we're going to sort of fix the situation. We work private sector, government sector and other elements working together to get to our infrastructure goals and other public service delivery goals as well. All right, let's uh, end this with this. Uh, your report identified corruption as a major factor, you know, in this reality. What has or what do you think the South African government can actually do to reverse this trend? I think in, in countries across the world, we're looking at all kinds of technologies and systems that have become available in recent years, digital systems, electronic systems that help increase transparency and efficiency in financial management, in transactions, in procurement, etc. These sort of uh, e-government systems as they are known, they increase transparency and that reduces the risk for corruption. But at the same time, we must think about the human element as well. It is about a culture of transparency, it's about a culture of compliance. So alongside physical systems, hardware and software, you need that human element as well. Everything combined is what you need to reduce the opportunity for corruption and, in effect, then the ability to control it. All right, thank you so much, Christy Vijan, Economist and Senior Manager Strategy, PwC South Africa. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you.